Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is day seven of Black History Month. And um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into it. Yesterday, I did poets and rounding out my arts week. Um, we're doing a day on Lift Every Voice and Sing by James Walden Johnson. And <clears throat> if you don't know about Lift Every Voice and Sing and you are a Black person, I love you, but shame on you. This is heralded as the Black National Anthem, um, and it's been that way for just a very long time. I'm going to get into uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing by James Weldon Johnson and um, from Jacksonville, Florida. Florida in the house. Um, it was arranged to celebrate Lincoln's birthday in 1900. His brother, J. Rosamond Johnson, set it to music. So James wrote the poem. Many songs start off as poems, by the way. But um, so James wrote the poem, J. Rosamond set it to music. So um, it was really beautiful. It, it, it's, it's just, I'm going to end this just letting y'all know, I'm going to end it reading the actual poem, but um, <clears throat> it was just, it's, it's just, I don't know. You can't, you can't, to me, I don't feel like you can hear the words to lift every voice and sing and not feel something powerful. This is, again, you can't grow from your past if you don't know what's in your past. Um, it was the actual NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, that adopted the song. Um, <clears throat> and so it is, it's just a very cherished song. It's, it's very big in civil and African American civil rights movement. And uh, yeah, it is our, um, you know, like our. Black National Anthem. I, I just don't know what else to tell you, but let me tell you a little bit about James Holden Johnson. He was born in 1871 and he died in 1938. He was an author, educator, lawyer, diplomat, songwriter, and civil rights activist. Um, he did a lot of work with the NAACP. <clears throat> He was the first African-American to be chosen as executive secretary of the organization. Um, he served in that position from 1920 to 1930. Um, very well known during the Harlem Renaissance for his poems, novels, and anthologies collecting both poems and spirituals of Black culture. He was appointed under President Theodore Roosevelt as U.S. Consul in Venezuela and Nicaragua for most of the period from 1906 to 1913. In 1934, listen at this. See, y'all be talking about y'all listen to let people tell you, oh, we done come so far and we need to let y'all need to let, you know, stuff go from the past. This was just in 1934. In 1934, he became the first, first African-American professor to be fired, to be hired at New York University. NYU hired their first African-American professor in 1934. Nineteen thirty-four. Okay, so later in life, he served as a professor of creative literature and writing at Fisk University. If you don't know, Fisk is a historically black university, um, and I'm probably going to spend the rest of the month talking about HBCUs in some way. Uh, Skiggy always finds this way in Black History Month with me. Because uh, you just go, no, it's always a thread. We in there somewhere. We always in there like swimwear, um, just as an FYI. But yes, um, you have to understand the power of HBCUs and what they did for the Black family unit. You know, I know a lot of people, some, you know, folks feel some type of way about HBCUs. Don't let how leadership runs them today dissuade the power of HBCUs and what they did for the black family structure. Trust me, 
there's way more to, to, to HBCUs than just what you learn the education in the classroom. Yes, that's very important. But what HBCUs did um, and still do for black family structure and the black community. But anyway, back to uh, James Weldon Johnson and his brother. Um, lift every voice and sing. <clears throat> Again, this is our black anthem. And um, yeah, so um, I'm reading this from Poetry Foundation and it's, um, it's in the words of James Weldon Johnson. It says, a group of young men in Jacksonville, Florida arranged to celebrate Lincoln's birthday in 1900. My brother, J. Rosamond Johnson, and, and I decided to write a song to be sung at the exercises. I wrote the words and he wrote the music. Our New York publisher, Edward B. Marks, made mimeograph copies for us, and the song was taught to and sung by a chorus of 500 colored school children. Shortly afterwards, my brother and I moved away from Jacksonville to New York, and the song passed out of our minds. But the school children of Jacksonville kept singing it. They went off to other schools and sang it. They became teachers and taught it to other children. Within 20 years, it was being sung over the South and in some other parts of the country. Today, the song, popularly known as the Negro National Hymn, is quite generally used. The lines of this song repay me in an elation, almost exquisite anguish whenever I hear them sung by Negro children. So, um, yeah. And apparently this, the source of that was from Complete Poems, published in 2000. The power behind Lift Every Voice and Sing hopefully will be evident when I read this poem to you. Because it's just, you know, I, I, I don't even know what else to say. You can find this poem on, of course, poetry.org. The NAACP actually has it on their website. Um, NAACP History, Lift Every Voice and Sing. If you just research, if you Google Lift Every Voice and Sing, you'll see it on the NAACP website. You'll see it on Poetry Foundation. PBS has something about it. Um, you know, who else? Uh, poets.org, NPR did something, the Washington Post has done something about the history of it. So I want to encourage you to dig deeper for yourself and um, look at it. If you don't know how the song goes, I am not a singer, by the way, but at least I know the melody and it goes, lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmony of liberty let our rejoicing rise high as the listening sky let it resound loud as the rolling sea sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is one that's the first verse <clears throat> and i ain't singing this whole song because i can't and i heard <laughs> it goes on to say stony the road we trod bitter the chastening rod felt in the days when hope unborn had died yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our father sat y'all i can't read this without crying so y'all to deal with it we have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path, we pray. 
Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. That is lift every voice and sing. That is the Negro national anthem. That is the black national anthem. And if you don't know it, you know it now. Get into it, learn it. When I grew up, we always only ran, sang the first stanza. And I remember when my church, um, every Black History Month, we sang it every Sunday. And we got to the point where we were seeing the whole song. It wasn't just the first verse. We would sing the whole song. And, you know, you, you really get the power of that song when you read or you sing the whole thing. And I really encourage you to really look at it, digest it for yourself. It's a beautiful poem. It's a be beautiful song. And, um, yeah. This is our history. This is the richness of what we as a community of black people bring to the culture, to this world. And um, yeah, I just, just let it get into you. That's all I can say. Y'all have a fantastic Friday. Love you guys. Have a great day.